Welcome friends, I'm Dr. Rajshrina Budrupad and today's video is all about detoxification. Unfortunately, we live in one of the most toxic times in human history. All of us are exposed to toxins on a daily basis, whether it's industrial exhaust, car exhaust, cleaning chemicals, microplastics, pesticides, food additives and preservatives, and even biotoxins like mold. No matter where you live, today's modern world exposes us to a significant burden of toxins. This includes food additives, chemicals, and preservatives. Unfortunately, a lot of our food is also heavily sprayed in pesticides. Genetically modified foods, also known as GMOs, have also become quite common. Toxins are even present in our personal care products, like cosmetics, lotion, and shampoo. Cigarette smoke has over 250 harmful chemicals. Biotoxins include mold, which can grow in a home that has water damage. We're also exposed to microplastics, which are becoming more pervasive in the environment. Next, we have cleaning chemicals, flame retardants, as well as car and industrial exhaust. There's also heavy metals like mercury, lead, and arsenic. Many people color their hair and are exposed to ammonia, bleach, and other chemicals present in hair dyes. Even alcohol and certain medications are considered toxins that your body has to detoxify. There's also PCBs and dioxins, which can be found in soil, water, and contaminated foods. Bisphenol A, also known as BPA, can be found on receipts as well as certain plastics. Finally, we're also going to talk about the impact of emotional toxins. Given all these toxic exposures, how do we know if your body is detoxifying well? Symptoms associated with poor detoxification include chronic fatigue, brain fog, stubborn weight, anxiety or depression, memory loss, frequent infections, headaches, constipation, sugar addiction, or accelerated aging. So why do toxins cause all of these symptoms? That's because toxins have the ability to poison certain enzymes in our body. They can also poison the mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouses of our cells. Toxins can also damage cell membranes. They can undermine the liver's detox pathways, and they can even damage DNA. Toxins are also able to modify gene expression. Some toxins interfere with our hormones and are called endocrine disruptors. Certain heavy metals can even replace minerals in our bones. Finally, and most concerning, is that toxins can even impair our ability to detoxify. Multiple toxins are able to work synergistically to cause even more damage to our body. And unfortunately, this avalanche of toxins entering our bodies can be a cause for a lot of chronic diseases. These toxins can cause neurological symptoms and lead to Alzheimer's disease as well as Parkinson's disease. For example, farmers have one of the highest rates of Parkinson's disease, which is thought to be due to the high pesticide exposure. Toxins are also contributing to the growing rates of autism in children. There's a definite link between toxin exposure and cancers. Toxins can also block our insulin receptors, causing insulin resistance, diabetes, and obesity. In fact, some toxins are even referred to as obesogens. Toxins can also interfere with our production of hormones, so it can cause infertility, and it can also decrease the production of thyroid hormones, causing hypothyroidism. Toxins can even affect our mental health, causing anxiety or depression. They can also cause chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. Finally, toxins can be a trigger for autoimmune diseases. But here's the good news. In today's video, I'm going to go over all the ways that we can promote detoxification. This can help to lower your inflammation, help you to lose weight, boost your energy, sharpen your mental clarity, and even balance your hormones and improve your fertility. It can also help to improve your digestion and symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. 
Finally, promoting detox pathways can also help alleviate a variety of symptoms, including anxiety, joint pain, rashes, and migraine headaches. But first, let's review all the main categories of toxins that we get exposed to. First, we have chemical exposure through foods. Processed foods are full of food additives, artificial colors, preservatives, and even flavor enhancers like MSG. These foods can also expose you to harmful trans fats. Other sources of toxin exposure include pesticides like glyphosate, as well as insecticides. If you eat larger fish on a regular basis, like certain types of tuna, this can expose you to mercury. If you're inhaling the smell of gasoline as you're filling up your car with gas, you may be inhaling benzene through your lungs. Even dry cleaning your clothes can expose you to chemicals. Other chemicals include lead, which could be present in the paint of an older home built before 1978. Volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs, could also be present in certain carpets and paint. Next, we have topical products, like cosmetics and lotions, where chemicals can get absorbed through the skin. The average woman in the United States uses 12 personal care products every day, and the average man uses 6. The European Union has banned over a thousand ingredients from personal care products for safety reasons, whereas the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has banned only 11. Some of these products expose us to xenoestrogens, which are chemical estrogens that mimic real estrogens in the human body and bind to real estrogen receptors. Xenoestrogens can be present in parabens, which are an antibacterial compound found in cosmetics, shampoos, and lotions. They're also found in phthalates, which are found in synthetic fragrances and perfumes. BPA is found in canned food and certain plastic bottles. PCBs and dioxins can be found in certain farm-raised seafood. Did you know that silver dental fillings, also known as silver amalgams, contain mercury? Each silver filling off-gasses about one microgram of mercury per day, which can enter the body through inhalation. In fact, the FDA now recommends that high-risk populations avoid silver fillings. This includes children, especially those younger than the age of six, those with neurological impairment or kidney dysfunction, nursing mothers, women who are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, as well as those sensitive to mercury, silver, copper, tin, or zinc. The next category of toxins is microplastics and nanoplastics. Plastics are now everywhere. They're in our oceans and landfills, and they're even present in the air we breathe and the water we drink. Microplastics are less than five micrometers in length, and nanoplastics are less than one micrometer. In fact, a recent publication showed measurable amounts of microplastics and nanoplastics present in bottled water. Toxin levels increase with the food chain. This is called biomagnification of toxins. Small fish that eat plankton have very little toxins. Fish that eat other fish start to accumulate more toxins. Larger fish like tuna, shark, and swordfish have the highest levels of mercury. If we're not detoxifying properly, toxins can get stored in the body. They can be stored in our fat cells, in our brain, in our liver, blood, as well as joints. Sadly, these toxins can also get transferred from a mother to her baby. A study published by the Environmental Working Group showed that over 200 industrial chemicals and pollutants were found in umbilical cord blood. These toxins are now a leading suspect in the rising rates of autism, ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, asthma, childhood obesity, childhood brain cancer, and acute lymphocytic leukemia. These toxins are also affecting people's fertility. Now, 5 to 10% of American couples are infertile, and up to half of all pregnancies end in miscarriage. 
Finally, it's important to be aware that there's individual variations in our susceptibility to toxins. In other words, some people are affected more than others. This may be due to genetics, diet and lifestyle factors, as well as the health of our detox organs and gut microbiome. Now let's review the organs that help us detoxify. This includes our liver, kidneys, bowels, lungs, skin, and lymphatic system. Our liver is one of our biggest detox organs. It metabolizes hormones, pharmaceuticals, and toxins. The liver converts fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble, making it easier to be excreted. It does this through Phase 1 and Phase 2 detox pathways. Phase 1 consists of the cytochrome P450 enzymes, and Phase 2 is the conjugation pathways. It's really important that Phase 1 and Phase 2 occur in succession because intermediate metabolites produced during Phase 1 may actually be more harmful or toxic than the original substance. It's good to be aware that grapefruit actually blocks the cytochrome P450 enzymes, which makes it harder for us to detoxify. So what can we do to help promote Phase 1 and Phase 2 detox pathways in the liver? Cofactors for Phase 1 include B vitamins, NAC and glutathione. Foods that can help promote Phase 1 include cruciferous vegetables, berries, green tea, curcumin, which is a compound found in the spice turmeric, dandelion, as well as garlic. Moving on to Phase 2, cofactors include NAC and glutathione, amino acids, magnesium, and choline. Foods that can help promote Phase 2 include egg yolks, which contain choline, berries, curcumin, dandelion, citrus fruits, cruciferous vegetables, allium vegetables, which include garlic, onions, leeks, and chives, as well as the herb milk thistle. As your liver is detoxifying, it generates a lot of reactive oxygen species. This is why it's important that your body have antioxidants like vitamin C and CoQ10, as well as essential trace minerals like selenium, zinc, and manganese to help clean up these free radicals. Next, we have phase 3 detox pathways. The liver produces bile, which contains these now water-soluble toxins. Bile is stored in our gallbladder and released into our small intestine when we eat. Our bowels then help flush out these toxins in our feces. Phase 3 detox also occurs when the liver releases these now water-soluble toxins into the bloodstream. Our kidneys filter the blood and excrete the toxins in our urine. Our gut plays a key role in detoxification as well. We excrete a lot of toxins in our feces, which is why it's so important that we have a complete bowel movement every day. Our gut microbiome, which is that ecosystem of trillions of bacteria in our gut, also plays a big role. If you have dysbiosis, which is an overgrowth of bad bacteria in your gut, these bacteria can produce higher levels of beta-glucuronidase, which is an enzyme that recycles toxins and estrogens back into your bloodstream. So it's fascinating that your gut microbiome can control this recycling of toxins, which we call enterohepatic recirculation. Each one of us has a toxic bucket, meaning we're all exposed to toxins and our bucket slowly fills. It begins with the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, lotions that we put on our body, and perhaps mold that we're exposed to in our home. Often, having an unhealthy gut microbiome is the tipping point that causes our toxic bucket to overflow and leads to symptoms and diseases. One example that often tips the balance of our toxic bucket is leaky gut, also known as increased intestinal permeability. The lining of our intestines is made by a single layer of cells that are bound together by tight junctions. If something disrupts this barrier, it can allow food particles, microbes, and other toxins to readily enter the bloodstream. This can confuse our immune system and cause systemic inflammation, which magnifies our body's reactions towards ordinary toxins. 
Did you know that some people have more sluggish detox pathways? This includes those with chronic constipation, those who don't drink enough water and are dehydrated, as well as those with a sedentary lifestyle. Other factors include having a diet low in antioxidants or if you don't sweat much. Finally, if you have a mutation in a gene called MTHFR, this can affect a detox pathway called methylation in every cell of your body. I have a whole video that covers the MTHFR gene in great detail, as well as what you can do about it, and I'll share the link in the description below. Now let's go over all the different ways that we can help our body to detox. The first step is to remove the sources of toxin exposure, which I'm going to go over shortly. Next, there are certain foods that can help us to better detoxify. Intermittent fasting can also be helpful. It's really important that we address the gut microbiome and heal any gut inflammation, like leaky gut. We can help to promote liver detox pathways as well as lymphatic detox pathways. Next, we can also detoxify through our skin, through our kidneys, and by getting a good night's sleep. I'm also going to touch on how to detoxify hormones like dirty estrogens. Finally, we also have to pay attention to our emotions, and I'm going to provide some tips that can help with emotional detox, which can have a big impact on our health. The first step is to remove any sources of toxin exposure. You want to eat organic, whole foods, and drink clean water, preferably water that's been filtered by reverse osmosis. Getting a HEPA filter can improve the quality of the air that you breathe. You want to use natural cleaners whenever possible, like vinegar, and clean personal care products. You can use the EWG's Skin Deep database and the Think Dirty Shop Clean app to check your personal care products. If there's any mold in your home, it's really important to have it properly remediated. Try to use glass containers instead of plastic to store your food. The safest cookware is stainless steel or ceramic coated, and you want to avoid any non-stick or Teflon coated pans. Finally, depending on your symptoms and mercury levels, you may want to consult a biologic dentist to safely remove your silver amalgams. So what are the foods that you want to avoid? You want to avoid refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and artificial sweeteners. Alcohol is a toxin both for your liver and your brain, so you want to avoid this when detoxing. You want to avoid soda and diet sodas, refined flours, and processed foods. It's important to avoid all deep fried foods to avoid harmful trans fats. Because caffeine has to be detoxified by your liver, it's also recommended to avoid coffee and caffeinated beverages during a detox. Remember to avoid grapefruit, which slows liver detox pathways. Finally, it can also be helpful to avoid gluten and dairy during a detox because these are the most common food allergies and sensitivities that often cause inflammation in the body. It's helpful to be familiar with the Dirty Dozen list. These are the produce items highest in pesticides that you want to prioritize buying organic. This includes apples, leafy greens like spinach, kale, and collard greens, pears, cherries, celery, green bell peppers, tomatoes, peaches, strawberries, green beans, grapes, and blueberries. The Clean 15 list are the produce items lowest in pesticides. This includes avocados, pineapple, broccoli, cabbage, watermelon, carrots, sweet potato, green peas, mushrooms, corn, eggplant, onions, and papaya. However, corn is often genetically modified, so I still recommend buying corn organic. You want to eat more detox-promoting foods. This includes cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, bright-colored berries, dark leafy greens, garlic and onions, as well as artichoke and beets. 
Citrus roots like oranges, lemons, and limes also help to promote liver detox pathways. The peel of these fruits has a compound called D-limonene that really enhances detox pathways. So you can include the zest of these fruits in your salad or include the peel when making a smoothie. The only exception that you want to avoid is grapefruit, which remember, slows liver detox pathways. Next, you want to make sure your diet has enough protein because you need amino acids to promote phase 2 detox pathways in the liver. Quality proteins include wild salmon, smaller fish like sardines, organic poultry, grass-fed meat, pasture-raised eggs, as well as nuts and legumes. Now what about grains? When detoxing, you want to avoid gluten, but you can include grains like basmati rice, oatmeal, buckwheat, millet, and sorghum. However, if you have insulin resistance or diabetes or are trying to lose weight, then I recommend avoiding all grains and going on a paleo diet. Fiber is incredibly important for detox because it binds toxins in the gut and helps to feed the good bacteria in your gut microbiome. In addition to eating a lot of vegetables and fruit, you can add chia seeds and flax seeds to your smoothies as well as your salads. You can also supplement with our prebiotic fiber, which is made from green banana flour as well as large arabinogalactans from the large tree. The more fiber you eat, the better your bowel movements, which improves phase 3 detox pathways. Next, hydration is incredibly important because it helps to flush out toxins through your kidneys. You can drink plain water, or if you prefer, you can add a little lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. You can also add a scoop of electrolyte powder to your water, which has all the minerals for your cells to give you more energy. Fresh herbs and spices can also help you detox. For example, cilantro, also known as parsley, binds to mercury, so it's a great one to pair with fish. Ginger helps to promote motility in the gut. Turmeric is anti-inflammatory, and many of these fresh herbs like oregano, basil, and mint have anti-inflammatory properties. Some helpful detoxifying drinks include green tea, ginger tea, and dandelion tea. Here's a recipe for one of my favorite detox smoothies that's really refreshing. What's unique about this smoothie is that it includes the whole orange, including the peel. That way you get the d limonene compound from the peel, which enhances detox pathways. Intermittent fasting is another great way to help your body detoxify. It promotes autophagy, which literally means self-eating, so it helps you to clean up all the garbage within your cells. One popular way to do this is to fast for 16 hours a day and to eat your meals within an 8-hour window. For example, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is a great way to lower inflammation in your body, as well as to lower your insulin levels. To learn more about autophagy, please watch my video, and I'll share a link in the description below. Next, it's really important that we heal the gut, because as Hippocrates once said, all disease begins in the gut. Moving your bowels daily and having a complete bowel movement is extremely important. One way to help keep your bowels regular is to take magnesium at bedtime. Our essential magnesium has been really popular because it also improves the quality of your sleep. And remember, magnesium is also a cofactor for liver detox pathways. If you need more help, I have a whole video on constipation, which reviews more natural options to improve your bowel habits, and I'll share the link in the description below. To improve the digestion of your food and to alleviate bloating, you can take digestive enzymes. Digestive Enzyme Pro is a broad-spectrum enzyme that targets the breakdown of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and it's best taken 1-2 to two capsules either before or after your meals. It can also be helpful to restore your gut microbiome with good bacteria, which are found in probiotics. Two of the most popular probiotics in my practice are the Probiotic 100 Billion and the Probiotic 225 Billion. 
These both have over five strains of Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium, which are the good bacteria for your gut microbiome. And they're best taken first thing in the morning on an empty stomach with a glass of water. To treat dysbiosis, which is an overgrowth of bad bacteria or yeast in the gut, we can use herbal antimicrobials. The three herbs that we most commonly use to treat these conditions are berberine pro, oregano oil, and allicidin. To learn more about how to use these herbs to treat gut conditions like SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth, or candida, which is yeast overgrowth, please watch my videos which cover my protocols in detail, and I'll share the links in the description below. To help your body heal and detoxify optimally, we have to treat inflammation in the gut, which is often the cause of leaky gut. L-glutamine is an amino acid powder that's fuel for the cells lining your small intestine, and it helps to seal up the tight junctions between these cells. IgG Guard is bovine immunoglobulins that works to rapidly heal inflammation in the gut, and it also works to bind microbes and toxins in the gut. To learn more tips on how to heal leaky gut, please watch my video, and I'll share a link in the description below. Next is Liver Detox Pathways. There's a lot we can do to help support our liver. You can supplement with the cofactors to help promote phase 1 and phase 2 detox pathways in the liver. This includes taking a high quality multivitamin to get all the trace minerals, methyl B complex to get all the B vitamins, as well as magnesium at bedtime. Antioxidant cofactors include glutathione, which is the master antioxidant and detoxifier for all the cells in our body, but especially for our liver. NAC stands for N-acetylcysteine, and it's actually the precursor to glutathione. Finally, we have vitamin C, which can help to neutralize all the free radicals that are being produced in our cells and our liver. Here's a great example of how powerful antioxidants can be. When a person overdoses on acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, the treatment is to give NAC through the IV. The high dose of NAC can actually help reverse the liver damage caused by the acetaminophen. Liver support is a natural plant-based supplement. It has milk thistle, choline, dandelion root, artichoke leaf extract, garlic, turmeric, inositol and methionine to help promote phase 1 and phase 2 detox pathways in the liver. Many of these ingredients also increase bile production to enhance excretion of toxins. Next, we can use zeolite binder to bind bile and toxins in the gut to enhance phase 3 detoxification. This is a natural supplement that has high quality zeolite clay, activated charcoal, and fulvic and humic acids. It can help to bind heavy metals, organic pollutants, and biotoxins like mold so that your body can eliminate them through the gut. Another big detox pathway is through our lymphatic system. We can improve lymphatic circulation through movement and exercise. Walking, running, jumping, or dancing are all great ways to promote lymphatic circulation. Dry brushing is another way to stimulate lymphatic circulation. You use a natural fiber brush and sweep gently towards the heart. This gentle sweeping motion can aid in toxin elimination through your lymphatics. You can also detoxify through your skin by sweating out toxins. Exercise can naturally help you break a sweat, or you can sit in a sauna. When you soak in an Epsom salt bath, your body absorbs magnesium through the skin, and this can help promote detoxification and lower inflammation in the body. The best way to detoxify through your kidneys is to flush out toxins by drinking plenty of water. Sleep is a critical time of detoxification and repair for your body. In fact, the glymphatic system removes toxins away from the brain while you're asleep. Some women suffer from a condition called estrogen dominance, where estrogen is not being properly cleared from the body. To help detoxify the estrogens, we can use Estrogen Balancer, which is like a broccoli pill to help better metabolize estrogens. We can also use calcium D-glucurate, which helps block the recycling of estrogens from the gut. 
To learn more about this topic, please watch my video on estrogen dominance, and I'll share the link in the description below. Finally, doing an emotional detox can have a big impact on your health, because stress itself is a toxin. You may want to avoid toxic people in your life, or other sources of stress, like the news or social media. Ways to calm your mind and release these emotional toxins include breathing exercises, yoga, and meditation. Practicing mindfulness and gratitude can also help with emotional detox. My patient Michael followed the detox protocol that I presented in today's video. He cleaned up his diet, started walking every day, and took the key supplements on a daily basis. When I saw him two months later, he had lost 15 pounds. He had better energy and focus, and he had no more headaches. And he told me he felt like a new person. So here are the key points from today's video. Toxins are ubiquitous, but there's a lot we can do to minimize exposure to toxins. Our diet can make a big difference in helping us avoid common toxins that are present in food. And some foods actually help us better detoxify. Our main detox pathways are through our liver, gut, kidneys, skin, and lymphatics. Phase 1 and Phase 2 detox pathways happen in the liver, followed by Phase 3, which happens in the gut. Regular exercise and quality sleep are essential for detoxification. Some of the key supplements that can help your body detoxify include glutathione, liver support, and zeolite binder. Finally, don't overlook an emotional detox, because stress and emotional toxins can have a big impact on our health. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Please post all your questions and comments below. I really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.